Thank you, Lauren Mastillo, Visual Art Program Manager at Country Arts SA for joining me in a chat about mentorships and in particular the Guildhouse Catapult Program. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for having me. Hi. Uh, Guildhouse and Country Arts first started working on spreading the word about Catapult to regional artists together in 2018 and I thought it might be useful for us to discuss our observations around the program and the structure of the mentorships for those who are interested in applying both for artists regionally and city-based. So firstly Guildhouse and Country Arts SA have announced two mentorships will be dedicated to regionally based artists which from a Guildhouse perspective is very important and exciting that regional artists can see our commitment and see that we see their visibility to, uh, you know and their, their use of a broad variety of um, ways of practice and location. Can you talk a little bit about this offering from a Country Arts perspective? Yeah, definitely. Um, so Country Arts, of course, one of our core remits is to support regional artists. And we do that through a number of ways. Sometimes that's through commissioning new work, um, supporting them to have a platform for their work to be seen. Um, but one of you know the most important ways that we do that is providing career pathways and sector development. We know that regional artists are often working in isolation, often from home studios. They might be quite remote. They might be quite a distance away from their closest gallery or their closest colleagues, other makers in the area. And so opportunities to connect naturally sometimes aren't as easy. Um, we know that Guildhouse have got an amazing extensive network of over 950 creative practitioners in their membership base, as well as relationships with galleries, curators and industry locally and nationally. So we really saw the opportunity to align our kind of goals and our vision of bringing regional artists um, into that professional network and you know, kind of increasing their platform to be able to engage with other practitioners, especially through the Catapult Mentorship Program, where you are paired with one person, a mentor of your choosing, and you work with them. And often that does lead to a kind of sustainable long-term relationship. Mm, that's so true. And I guess, you know, now that we've been doing it for a few years, we really see how broad the projects are with artists and that relationship between mentor and mentee and I think we were talking earlier about how the structure of this particular mentorship isn't really about putting on an exhibition or publishing a book or mm. you know, that the end product really is what the artist the mentee learns like you're the end product rather than um, so many other grants so I guess this differs so much from a grant in that um, it's about the process and the the development of of um, that one artist and that relationship they create with the mentor yeah yeah is there any particular um, structure that you see within those pairings um, do you see that it's mainly about expanding professional practice and connection or is it about skill or is it just the whole gamut? Well I think um, you know regional artists are like any kind of you know creative um, practicing group of people is that their interests and their skills are so broad which is amazing about the um, catapult mentorships is because it's all about flexibility you're right in that it's not a grant it's not there to see the realization of a particular project or an exhibition or um, you know attend a workshop so it does mean that the applicant is the project and I think that can be hard for some people to kind of wrap their head around sometimes is that they are the project and their mentor is there in a paid professional capacity to help work on them and their goals and their needs mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's been a range of things that we've seen um, past recipients apply to work with their mentor on. Some of those has been around very specific skills, like a particular type of enameling or maybe working with a particular type of clay. Some people have wanted to further explore their conceptual thinking and working through how they can translate their ideas into a kind of visual format. Other people have focused more on the kind of business skills side of it. So maybe how to develop a product range or how to expand their networks to be able to market their product range or, um, you know, networking and, and meeting people. So I think we have seen 
people use the mentorship in a number of different ways, but at the heart of it, it's always about the individual. And the most successful applications have been where there's just one or two really kind of specific core goals that a person is wanting to work towards Mm -hmm. and they're very clear about that and their mentor is very clear about that. Mm. I think that's a really good point actually because I think it's really easy to forget that this potentially could just be one mentorship and there are many that you can undertake throughout your entire yeah. professional practice. And it's really, um, you know, many artists come to, I'm sure, both of us and say, these are all the things I want to do. But it's really about narrowing down and thinking about what is it that I need to learn in the next five years so that I can really create a sustainable um, practice for myself. And rather than looking at a mentor that's maybe 20 years ahead, mm. looking at someone that's a few years ahead so that you can kind of really lay a path that is achievable and um, is really focusing on what you can learn for the next and implement for the next few years. Um, Another really important point you just brought up is it's a paid opportunity. So making sure that both the mentee and the mentor are paid for their times, I think is a really um, valid way of um, acknowledging yourself and your practice, but also acknowledging that continually developing and learning is necessary for everyone mm. throughout their their career um how do you think it's a you know what's the best way to go about finding a mentor do you think do you have um any pointers or have you had anyone um, make any suggestions to you when you have these conversations with the vision artists well i think mentor as you said definitely should be who's someone who's well placed to help you meet the goals that you've set out for yourself and it's it's important, like you said, you can have many mentors over a lifetime and even some of the most established practitioners still will have a mentor. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think we need to dispel of the myth that a mentor is for someone who's in an early stage of their career because that's not the case. Anyone can do a mentorship. Mm -hmm. Um, It's important that your mentor is someone who... um, is I guess senior to you in the area that you're looking looking to um, develop your skills in and I think you've explained it well in the past Debbie where you've said you know there should be like a couple of steps ahead of you maybe not like 20 years ahead of you Mm -hmm. um, because some of the selection criteria for the catapult mentorship is that needs to be ambitious but also needs to be achievable so that that in a sense it needs to be achievable within the budget and the time frame and ambitious in the sense that you know, your mentor shouldn't be probably your best mate with that that you collaborate with regularly because that's already a strong relationship that you have with another practitioner. Mm. And the amazing thing about the catapult mentorships is that they do pay the mentor and the mentee. And because of that, you know, you are employing your mentor to work with you as a professional. Like that is going to be their job on the project is to to work with you. Mm. I think another important thing is, you need to go into it with the understanding that you need to be vulnerable. Um, And I think that's something that's come out of the research around the catapult mentorships as well through the study that Guildhouse have done with the University of South Australia, that you need to be open about what you're not good at. And that's kind of like why your mentor is there. Um, If you were amazing at everything, like you wouldn't need them. So um, in that sense, you do need to pick someone that you're comfortable and confident with and do your research. You might not know them personally yet, but if you are familiar with their practice and their work and you've identified that they have a skill set or an approach to making or a particular network that you admire or um, you look to as really admirable then that's definitely worth starting a conversation with that person to explore if their skills meet your kind of needs. Mm, I think it's a really good point about obviously vulnerability and feeling as though you're ready to take on any feedback. But I think also the mentor needs to be really vulnerable as well to be sensitive to the needs of the mentee and to Mm. really be able to um, work through what it is they need to expand on and and to have that kind of critical voice with them. And I think that's one of the um, difficult things when um, 
starting that relationship is you're right we don't want you to pick someone who is your studio buddy or that has just taught you for three or four years typically you you need to have some sort of um you know know that you're um compatible but also not be too close because otherwise you could be kind of doing this in your own time as opposed to yeah. having the structure of a mentorship um i think that's a, a, a really a, a valuable thing and that you know, you might go through a few different suggestions of mentors and you might have a chat to them and think, mm, I'm not sure that we're compatible or I think that, you know, um, myself and this person can have a bit more vulnerability. So I think it's, you know, you might need to have a chat to a few people before you land on that that right person. So I think even though the application process is open for a couple of months, it's, it's good to kind of start thinking about who that mentor is and what those key goals are kind of from, from the get-go. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. I'm just trying to think of, of what else we need to cover in terms of of applicants and um, finding that right that right project because it is really such a personal project and there's not particularly one template where we can say this is how you do a mentorship because it is really so personal to to each artist to their outcomes and to what they want their practice to be because there are so many different ways to present your practice and to um, navigate your practice within your professional life not everyone's a full-time artist um, so there are a few different ways to kind mm -hmm. of navigate navigate that yeah. way um, is there anything else in particular that you think um, regional artists are considering or need to consider when they're putting in their application I think definitely be um, realistic about what you want and what you need and use the flexibility to your advantage we have seen past regional applicants really kind of make the most of the flexibility and kind of structure the mentorship in a way that their mentor is coming to them when needed and they they still have opportunities to travel to their mentor mm. but I think in that respect the catapult mentorships um, really enable people to fit in these kind of skill development learning opportunities around like work family life you know we know that not everyone is a full-time artist and that doesn't diminish a practice that doesn't make it lesser than like that's totally valid mm. most artists have got you know, other like multiple forms of employment mm -hmm. and just freeing yourself up from needing to kind of be somewhere at a certain day at a certain time to take part in a formal training opportunity. I think the catapult mentorship program is a really great way, um, you know, to, to bring in those learning opportunities into a practice. Um, and I think flexibility is key, really. You've mentioned that a few times. And, and, you know, a lot of people ask me, how long is the mentorship? Is it a year? Is it six months? And it really depends on the volume, the size and the needs of your project and what your aims are. Some people might do it in an intensive um, three week, especially if it's a mentor that's from interstate or that um, doesn't necessarily live in close proximity to them. And others will find it really useful to do it over a year and have some key kind of peak times within that. Um, you know, potentially meeting at the beginning and meeting at the end and doing the mentee during the bulk of the work in between. Yeah. But even as you say, um, traveling to each other's studios and, and having that flexibility about where the, the location of the mentorship takes place is really mm. interesting too, because we know that, you know, I know for me, studio visits is one of the most exciting and important parts of uh, the job because it means that you get to see the um you know, the atmosphere that people are making in and the ways and processes of their making, which especially if you are a maker, it's incredibly important to see how another person um, can do that. Or if you're a mentor going to a mentee studio, just picking up on little nuances of this is how, you know, this is better for your for your back or, you know, yeah. this is an easy way to have your setup, as we saw with the Catherine Truman, Kat Inglis mentorship in particular. So, um, yeah, I think flexibility is definitely key there. I think another important thing that I want to mention as well is that this is the first year of a three year partnership where we'll be offering catapult mentorships for regional practitioners. So quarantine positions for regional practitioners this year, we've got um, one $5,000 mentorship that's completely open and one $5,000 mentorship that's for a young person aged 26 years and under. So there is a longevity that we're aiming for across the project as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe 
you know, you apply this year or you haven't quite found the right mentor, um, but it's definitely something to start thinking about because it is an ongoing program that we're supporting. Most definitely. And I feel like people see that deadline of when they need to apply by and think, oh, I need longer to really stew yeah. on what my aims are and to really kind of map it out. And although we do need a map, we don't need a date by date kind of itinerary, but we definitely do need those kind of goalposts so that we can tell when you've reached, um, you know, those, those ambition points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some fantastic points today, Lauren. Thank you so much for your time. Exciting. Can't wait to see the you know, the applicants and start supporting artists. Most definitely. So if you're interested in applying, please reach out to Guildhouse or um, touch base with Lauren as well and um, look forward to the applications rolling in. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks so much.